company that's had plug-in hybrids for almost a year and a half now. And uh, so we've learned some interesting things. Uh, so first question I always get is why Google? Why does Google care about plug-in hybrids? Well, the Recharge It initiative, which is what I, we call our transportation, uh, electric transportation initiative, is part of Google.org. And Google.org is the philanthropic arm of Google. Um, which focuses on areas of climate change, public health, and global development, and Recharge It is part of the Climate Change Initiative. Uh, so back in late 2006, uh, we decided <coughs> that a uh, demonstration fleet of plug-in hybrids might be a good idea as a way to see, you know, do these things really work? How well do they work um, in terms of reducing CO2 emissions? And it would be kind of neat to have a, a fleet that drives around in real world conditions. So there were several companies that um, were saying that they were going to be coming out with the, those in the near future. We went and visited a bunch of them and eventually settled on High Motion, which was shortly thereafter purchased by A123. And we uh, converted a fleet of six plug-in hybrids, four Priuses and two Ford Escapes, all with the High Motion system. Priuses had 4.7 kilowatt hours, the High Motion, or the Ford Escapes had eight and these cars are part of a larger program we created called the G Fleet, which is all hybrid vehicles, 25 vehicles, that uh, employees that took our shuttle buses from all over the Bay Area to our Mountain View campus um, could then use during the day so that hopefully more people would use the shuttle and you know, be more green. And then what we did was, this is the uh, original V1 system uh, that High Motion produced. They're now coming out with their V2 system right now. Which is the fully crushed Tesla one. I'm sure Sanji can talk about that. Uh, we had our um, unveiling in June of last year. When we had two vehicles, and now, since then we've added four more. This is our solar carports at the Google campus, part of our 1.6 megawatt solar uh, system at, um, at Google. This is at the unveiling. You can see some of the cords there. And this is the um, data acquisition system we built. This is the first generation, which was based on a laptop. It lasted for a few months, but the uh, hard drives didn't like to uh, operate in a car environment. So then we made another version, which uh, runs um, all solid state. So it's much more robust. With this data acquisition system, we collect data from the CAN bus of the vehicle. But the high motion system itself injects more data into the CAN bus that we extract. We also track GPS and we track the charge power of the vehicle. And then all that data gets uploaded onto a website. You can go to it right now, recharge.org, and see the overall um, performance of our fleet. And then you can drill down into individual cars and see how cars did on individual trips. So this is one example trip with a lot of data. So I'm going to scroll through it here a bit. We show data about the battery, data about um, various aspects of the vehicle. Um, and over the course of the last year and a half, we've put about 50,000 miles on these plug-in hybrids. We've had very few problems with them at all. The only real problem I can think of, there's two problems I can think of. One, they have a switch on the panel that you can turn the pack off. And we quickly learned that we had to tape over that switch so that people wouldn't <laughs> accidentally turn the switch off. And there was also a minor issue kind of conflict with the GFI, GFI circuit breaker, so occasionally they would pop, not very often, once every few weeks, which uh, A123 High Motion helped us sort out. But the cars themselves have performed beautifully. There's been really no problems whatsoever, and we've collected a lot of really interesting data. And again, I hope you get a chance to talk about that more. One interesting thing that we found when we first started using the cars for the first month and a half or so, um, we were people, we had a small subset of a dozen people or so that were driving the cars, and we were getting 80 in the 80s mile per gallon. Um, then we opened this wider G Fleet program I talked about, and we now have hundreds, I think actually over a thousand people are signed up for that. So we have a huge range of drivers, but when we dug into the data, the, the mileage, overall mileage, fleet mileage started to drop. It turned out that the the trips that we were driving were very, very short. And for this particular hybrid architecture, um, that's the worst case scenario because the, every cold start, I don't know how many of you have driven a Prius, it heats up the catalyst and heats up the pollution trap 
by keeping the engine on for the first few minutes. So you get kind of very ordinary fuel economy for the first few minutes. So recently, in the last two months, we did a test where we used the uh, National Household Transportation Survey data uh, to try to design a distribution of trips that's very representative of what the average, the overall U.S. population drives. And we drove these, these uh, plug-in hybrids, non-plug-in versions of these hybrids, and some regular cars um, through, the, through that cycle to see what you can get. And this is my last slide, which is um, the Prius has got, uh, over this whole range of trips, 93.5 miles per gallon. Um, in the city, they got about 115, and the highway about 69 miles per gallon. You can also see that the Ford Escape Hybrid did very well, about 50% better than uh, its non-plug-in brethren. And then there's just some example vehicles uh, from sedans, minivans, and a large SUV. That gives you just sort of a comparison idea of the kind of game.